all right good morning y'all <laughs> we're finally back out here on the water uh i don't well i ain't gonna turn my depth finders on yet because i'm gonna go up there and try to catch bait hopefully i get some some skipjack i'm actually looking forward to testing out my new net that i got i got a good uh, uh tape net uh but i imagine this water temp is probably well within the low 40s which I, i'll check it once i'm able to get the depth finders turned on i don't like running depth finders when i'm trying to get skipjack because i believe it spooks them off but we're gonna get up here and try to catch some bait you know to be honest with you after probably about nine days of being stuck in the house not being able to come out here i don't care if i catch a thing today or not, day or not so but either way we're gonna give it a shot so i'm gonna get up here and, uh, and i'm gonna try to catch some bait uh, we're gonna try to get some skipjack and uh, uh shad so all right well i'll see you when we get up there and get set up all right and with any luck get up here and catch us we don't need many i'd sure like to catch us about you know five or six skipjacks we're gonna we got a lot of current today which is to be expected but um so we're gonna be fishing a lot of a lot of holes probably find some current seams stuff like that but first things first we gotta try to find us some bait All right, well, let's try to find some shad. I found the mother load. I mean, a big old school load down there. All right. Let me get this. Let me get back over top of them. They're about 25 feet down. over top of them. I'm coming back up on yeah. uh, brand new net. We'll see how this works. see how this works this first throw is going to be horrendous i know it will be Big old school. Yeah, I figured it was going to be horrendous. God, dog, that's a big school. That is a big school. So let me reset. Let's 
still down there. Come on there, trolling motor. There we go. Now I just gotta let it take forever to get down to the bottom, but there is a bunch down there. They're all in about 26 foot of water, which I think this is a 30 foot rope, I think. See how it's a big school, so we should have got something. I would think, anyway. Of course, then we got this current, so that don't help. Oh, we got some big, we got some big gizzards. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> we, yeah, we got a lot of them. Uh, this is one of them one throws and you're done type deal. Let me, let me get this net to boat. <laughs> I was wondering why it was so heavy. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. Look at that. Y'all got to, let me, let me get you a better picture of this. Look at that. Bunch of big, big, big gizzards. Look at them all. Yeah. Yeah, mother load right there, boys. Heck yeah. All right. Let me, because I, I do not need all of these. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> yeah i uh, i don't need all these so let me get the ones i need let me just i'm just gonna bring the bait cooler up here All right, so I'm just gonna grab the bigger ones. I mean, look at these shad. <laughs> yeah, I dang sure don't need all these. Some big old gizzard shad. Mm. All right. Look at all that. Stop. All the backwaters are frozen, so these, so these birds don't have a choice but to sit out here on the main river. <laughs> I mean, I've been coming down this river for a little ways, and I bet I've seen thousands of geese and ducks. <laughs> it's it's kind of cool because all the because <clears throat> all the coves and backwaters and stuff like that are frozen. So <clears throat> look at them all. <laughs> all right y'all we're set up on our first spot here um so the way this current is uh there's probably not going to be any dragging today but that's fine uh what i what i'm going to do is I've, I've fished this stretch before but it's just a series of deep holes which i see some activity down there 
not a whole lot because my theory is is that with this current as cold as this temps are them fish are just they're slapped stuck to the bottom so what i'm doing is I'm, I'm fishing like so i'm on the upside of this hole and that hole behind me goes down to about now i come across about 51 feet i'm currently sitting in 47 foot right around there so i'm going to cast these out of course y'all see the bait that i got today is shad uh, but I'm just going to kind of spread them out. We're just going to sit here for 30, 45 minutes. Then we'll move up to the beginning of the next hole. Because I think if I sit as it comes up, I think what's ever down there, you know, they'll move around a little bit to get the, the food they want. So I'm going to get some bait cut up. We'll get everything set up. <clears throat> oh, my suspended rod. <clears throat> so, well, I'm going to start with this one over here. So we're gonna to try to see if six ounces will hold it, which I think six ounces will hold it. I mean, we do got current, but it's not that bad. But I'm hoping it's not too bad to where these cats don't wanna get them moving around. <clears throat> and so I see a lot of guys when they fish with these, uh, you know, whether it be rattles, floats, whatever, and they always talk about shortening up this leader, which, you know, in a way, yeah, because if you, if you think about it, if you shorten it up to about right here, it's gonna be real close to the bottom. But you also got to take in count the current, all right? So my, my leaders never change. I, I don't, if, if anything, I may slide this forward or backwards, but I'm going to start out with them exactly the way they, they always are. Because if you think about it, I mean, you're in current, if the weight is on the bottom, you know, it's not going to sit straight up. That current is going to create drag on one, your line, and two, your float, whichever float it may be. So if this is the bottom, I'll bet you, now this is just a theory, obviously I'm not down there looking at it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that it's probably gonna be somewhere right around there within a few inches of the bottom, judging by this current. Now, obviously if I had a bigger float, you know, that may be a little bit higher, but at the, at the same time, if you go a bigger diameter, you're gonna create more drag, which is probably gonna push it further down. I don't know, like I said, it's just my theory. Um, I just kinda know, you know, how this, the current works. Cause like I got kind of hard to tell with the weight being under, but with the, with the bait on there, I think I'm only going to be about eight inches off the bottom, six to eight inches off the bottom. And if, you know, if it turns out I don't get too many bites then you know, I'll move my float back. But that's the great thing about these peg floats because you can adjust that stuff. So the way we had this uh, way this uh, weather was this last you know seven eight days, I'm not expecting the bite to be fire at all. Uh, we get we get one or two fish today, I'll be extremely happy. Uh, it's going to be slow. That's a fact. I, I just need to figure out if they're going to be on this, if they're going to be more on the outside bend, kind of in the current and deep holes, or if I'm going to have to move over to the inside bend and try to find kind of more or less the same thing. Maybe on a flat, you know, you never know. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, because, well, the, the closer we get to the, the steam plant, it seems like the water's getting warmer because we're about 41 and a half degrees here. So, but we'll move around. Like I said, I, I got plenty of time today. I've been stuck in that house. I, I told my wife I'm going to be out fishing pretty much all day because we got to, I got to feel the tug. So we're gonna keep moving around. I got a, I got a bunch of spots we're gonna we're gonna kind of hit. We're gonna sit up on some more holes on this outside bin because they're really good. And then uh, we're gonna work our way up to where it turns into an inside bin, and then fish some of them holes. So, with any luck, we'll pull a few. I hope we do. And I surely do. But I wanted to go over uh, one thing. So. Uh, like I said, the last time I was out here, we still got a lot of shad on the screen, or on, a lot of bait on the screen, which is good. Uh, the, the one thing about, you know, people talk about shad kill, and I know for some people, they just don't quite understand it. They think, you know, maybe all the shad get killed off or something like that. But, you know, okay, so first off, that doesn't happen. It does kill a bunch of shad. And that typically happens when the water temp takes a drastic change. Like, like I said, when I was out here the last time before we had this cold snap, um, it was, uh, the water temp was right at 50 degrees. Now we're into the, the very high 30s. Okay, so 
what that does in that short period of time when that water temp takes a drastic drop is them smaller fish uh, they can't adapt fast enough right so the bigger shad you know stuff like that they're going to be just fine uh, but the smaller shad they can't adapt that fast so it, what it ends up happening is they they just they, they just die right so <clears throat> and even if they don't die what will end up happening is they become so lethargic that they, they just don't move you know quick enough and so either way the long story short is all of that combined makes very easy pickings for these fish out here very easy pickings so that's why this time of year you know the fishing it, it, it's just tough you know uh there was a uh, the other guys that come in the boat i was kind of explaining to them why you know because they've been fishing all over they they ain't really caught anything and i said well that's ex that's exactly it because these fish have got so much so much easy food to eat that you know we're trying to get them again try to buy you know our little pieces of bait we got sitting out there and there's no reason for them to go chase anything down move around if they don't have to because of all the bait that's just kind of floating around down there so it's going to be pretty tough fishing uh i give it you know another week or so and the fish is going to be really good see that and like I said, it's also it's also a benefit of if you do have a, a shad kill. Yeah, it's going to kind of suck once it happens. The fishing's going to be tough because there's 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 so much food out there. But after that, once all that starts kind of drying up, then you know them fish still want to eat. That's going to be the ticket to be out here fishing because they're going to be hungry. They're they're going to get hungry real fast because you got to think, you know, pretty much everything in this river minus the you know the asian carp and stuff but pretty much everything in this river are eating shad this time of year whether it be the itty bitty shad you know all the way up to the big shad i mean something's eating them shad you know this time of year everything in this river is so that's what we're you know kind of we're kind of on the front side of that i, I really think i mean i don't know that for 100 percent certainty but i'm almost positive that that's what has happened this past week so you know, fish is going to be tough. I know that. It happens, you know, every year we have a, a really good cold snap like this. Uh, and, it, you know, it'll just take a while for them fish to get hungry again. And when they do, it is a lot of fun. But I'm still without, you know, I'm still not without hope we can pick us up a couple today because we got some pretty good spots. Like I said, if these, uh, if these holes, these humps, and these points don't work out, then we're going to go sit up in front of structure and see if we can't pull some out of there. Because structure is a really good... A really good spot to find them too you know deep structure well it doesn't necessarily have to be deep structure but just structure period uh, because that's another spot where they can get out of this current they can sit behind it and stuff like that it'll help break that current if they don't want to move up shallow or if they don't want to move you know to an inside bend where there's less current so yeah we still got a lot of that to fish yet God, that's a bite. I got him too. <laughs> I don't think he's a big one, which he's not. <laughs> but it's a fish. I'll take you. I will take you. <laughs> All right. Oh, this feels good after, like I said, almost nine days not being able to get on the water. And of course, it's a channel cat. That's okay. Y'all know how I feel about channel cats, but I'll take this dude today for sure. <laughs> I'll take him today. <laughs> Heck yeah. <sighs> Well, I appreciate it, buddy. You got one biting the center rod, too. If I had to guess, probably in the channel cap. I mean, he is just muddy. It's about where I figured they'd be, just dead on that bottom. Hang on, buddy. Yeah. <sighs> Yep, me just muddy as can be. Well, I appreciate it. All right. 
Now that felt pretty good, even though he was itty bitty one. Got him. <laughs> he was there to swim it off with it. Nothing wrong with that. He feels like a blue though. Yeah, he feels like a blue. I think, I hope he's a blue. On that shallower side. Oh yeah. Got a blue. Not a monster. You have got to see the belly, the belly on this fish. My Lord. I don't know how they can eat another bite, you know? This is beyond me. Okay, so this fish would typically, oh, he's pooping everywhere. But he would typically weigh maybe five pounds. But look at the gut on this dude. My Lord. See, his air bladder's not full, because this is up here, it's not stiff, but right down here. Holy crap. <laughs> you, sir, have been eating good. But with all that bait down there, I can imagine. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. <laughs> oh my God. Oop, there's a better fish. There's a better fish. Yeah, there's a better fish. He hit it. He hit it like a good one. Even though he's not, but he hit it like one. Right there on that shallower side. I know this rod's not in about probably 15 foot of water. Oh, oh, pull and drag, pull and drag. Oh God, don't do that. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. God, dog is current. Stay up there, whatever you do, stay up there. Yeah, I know this, this rod can't be in 15 foot of water. But I'll take them no matter what, what depth of water they come out of. Heck yeah. He sure is moving around an awful lot for being as cold as this water is. Oh yeah, good blue right there. I'm gonna show you something about this fish too. Let me, let me get the net on him. which is odd. And I'll show you what's odd here in a minute. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Well, get out of there. Oh yeah, just a fat, God, just huge bellies on these fish. 
Okay, so I'll show you. Let me get him. Get him out of this net here. I mean, just a perfect. Some old triple threats, man. I, I, I'm telling you. I like. I don't know what. Like I said in my last video, I don't know what kind of magic metal they use. They are definitely something else. So anyway, he is definitely glove worthy. So let me get him real quick. And I'll show you something about this fish that's... Well, like, get off the net, buddy. Like, look at him. But you see how dark that fish is? This time of year? Ah, he's just a dark, dark fish. That tells me he may be running these shallows. Been up there a while, you know, running up and down his bank in the shallows. But he's a good one. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Man, just, I don't know how you're suffice to anyway. All right. Well, I surely do appreciate it. I mean, just look at the gut on this fish. He, he can't fit no more. He can't fit no more shad in there. He just can't. Thank you, buddy. Get on down there. He can't fit no more shad in there. Just huge bellies on these fish. All right, now let's get him baited. I don't care if they come off the same rod all day. Like I said, there's a, there's a bite window. And it's, you know, some days it's, some days it's all day. Some days it's only a couple hours. Some days it's only 30 minutes. But you gotta be there when them fish move up. And I knew when the sun finally got through these clouds, you know, that may help. But. <sighs> well, all right, y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and close this one out. <clears throat> uh, man, it was tough, which I knew it would be. Like I said, we, we dropped 10 degrees in water temp. <clears throat> since about eight days ago uh we we did have some sort of a shad kill i've been watching these seagulls flying around me and they've been just just picking them up and a couple times i could see you know i could see a handful of them uh you know just kind of floating just under the surface there so we have had some sort of a shad kill but we also have i mean the the shad that are left they are just so stacked up right now because everywhere I fished, so, well, I, I tell you, so I started off deep, started off a hole, which, you know, you guys seen earlier, <clears throat> didn't get a bite. So then I moved to a different hole, same thing, didn't get a bite, but shad everywhere. So then I, I set up on some structure uh, and nothing, I mean, not even a sniff. So what I ended up doing is coming to this spot, which, uh, it's it, where I started, it's a flat that kind of bends into the, the creek mouth down there. And so that's where I started, you know, that's where I fished in this spot and ended up getting bit. I caught a channel cat, which that don't mean nothing, but, uh, but then I come up further on this flat because that's all this is. Now it, it narrows as it goes to this point up here, but um, it's just a mud flat. So I kept kind of working up down this mud flat, ended up catching a decent fish, but I didn't really expect a whole lot. I, honest, I honestly didn't. I just wanted to come out here because like I said, I ain't been fishing about eight days and I was fiending. So... Uh, that and I wanted to try out my new net. So it turns out my net works pretty good. Uh, <clears throat> I was able to, you know, of course, the shad are everywhere. And they're just in huge, huge schools. And uh, so they were they were pretty easy to catch. But to catch the big ones like I did, that's that's something I don't typically do. Uh, and, I, you know, with any luck, you know, I'll, I'll maybe get to do it again. I don't know. But I'm seeing some, you know, like just a, a ton of fish now granted a lot of them could be stripers uh i mean they could be big fish i don't know you know big cats but but at the same time you know they, i mean it's everything down there is easy picking it's like i said with this water temp them fish they are not fast uh them big schools of shad it's kind of why they school up you know safety in numbers uh, because they you know they're just so lethargic right now so they're just kind of just these huge masses just kind of swimming along and then the rest of the, you know, the predator fish can just pick them off and eat all they want. Like the fish that I did catch today, they were just, 
so stuffed. I mean, just even that, that last fish, you know, that, that fish probably would have typically weighed, you know, maybe 20, 25 pounds, but he was banking on 30 pounds because he had probably five pounds of shad in him. Uh, so it's, you know, it's just that time of year. It happens after a big cold snap like we get here. Uh, but, you know, it'll, it'll kind of settle down like after this week, we'll get the water temps. They'll kind of, they'll kind of perk back up a little bit. Uh, cause we're already up at 42 degrees. Uh, so that I think the ambient temp today is, I think we're right about 50 right now. Um, now of course the wind's still cold. Of course the wind's coming off the water, which is, you know, still cold. So, but you know, like I said, the rest of this week it's going to rain. So we're going to get a lot of rain. So it's going to trash this river. Uh, so hopefully I get another chance to come back out here. Uh, but I know next week's supposed to be looking pretty good next week. But yeah, I mean, at least we didn't get skunked. That's kind of the biggest deal. I uh, got the trout new nets. That's a good thing. Still putting these mad cats reels through the paces. But you're doing good. That was one of the biggest things that was, you know, you start lobbing, you know, six to eight ounces of lead. Eh, sometimes reels don't like that. But, you know, these ones seem to be handling just fine even with that. So... So yeah, I guess with all that being said, uh, hopefully next trip will be a lot better. But I appreciate you watching this one, and I'll catch you on the next one.